Welcome into the Jamie Chadwell Show, brought to you by Hendrick Toyota. A rivalry week for Charleston Southern as the Bucks go for their third straight win over the Citadel. Downtown Charleston, Johnson Haygood Stadium, 6 o'clock kickoff in that one. Your team, Jamie, will be looking to go 3-1, and one, and always an exciting week when you play your local rival. Yeah, it's, uh, kids look forward to it, the community does, your, your fans, your student body. So uh, it's, been a, it's been a great week as far as just uh, the preparation and getting ready for those guys, a great team. And anytime you're playing a good team that's well coached, it sort of raises the game a little bit. You've got to be on your, on your game as coaches, and uh, we're looking forward to going down there Saturday. How much do the guys look forward to this game? Well, I think, uh, I mean, you hope they look forward to all of them the same. Uh, but this one's obviously, I think, means a little more out of conference wise. You know, the in conference games are obviously the most important, but the out of conference, just because it's in the city, uh, it's 15 miles down the road. You know, they get people on our campus wearing Citadel shirts. And, uh, and so there's just a, uh, that rivalry just peaks up a little bit more. So I know our guys are always excited about playing this game. Six days ago now, but a 47-7 win over ETSU in a big second quarter got the job done for you in that one. Yeah, it was good to get a win. I thought uh, we came out just you know a little flat, just not executing um, the way you'd like to off that short week. But uh, second quarter was big. We got some turnovers on on defense and on special teams. I was able to capitalize in the red zone and uh, cruise to a victory there. It was it was good to one get the win, two uh, play well in that second quarter, and I thought we got some young guys in in the in the later stage later stages of the third and fourth quarter to got some playing time that'll help us down the road. Take you through some first half highlights of last Thursday's game. Second Thursday night under the lights for the Bucks against your alma mater ETSU and uh, they gave you a game in the first quarter. Yeah they came out you know and executed and did some good stuff and was able to uh, I think had a good plan for us and got a great got a great kickoff return for them. Uh, bad coverage by us uh, to get a great start so you get them momentum from the opening kick. ETSU gets the ball first. They play two quarterbacks. Herrick made some plays early in the game. He got some pressure there, and you end up getting them into a third down on their first series and getting them off the field pretty quickly. Yeah, they got great field position. I think they got a penalty uh, We got a, uh, that backed them up, and we got them in a third down and medium, and we were able to get them off the field with uh, uh, our defense and swarm in there and getting us the ball back. Bobby Ruff had six tackles, half a tackle for loss. Zane Cruz was there as well. Two sophomores that are have made some plays for you here early in the season. They've done a good job uh, learning the defense, uh, continue to play. They're getting obviously a lot more reps this year, and I think they're doing some great stuff. Kyle Copeland gained his second start at quarterback, and Darius Hammond's been a threat out of the backfield as well. 32-yard catch takes it into ETSU territory, and uh, really seeing the kind of weapon he can be on offense here early in the year. Yeah, he's done well. We got, we got good uh, um, momentum going down the field. We get uh, inside the red zone, got a chance to make some plays. I think we're first and 10 inside the 20 yard line or right at the 20 and uh, get frustrated here. We don't we don't put it in, have a chance on third down to make a play to get us a first down. Uh, and unfortunately for us, we just have a miscommunication between our quarterback and our receiver. End up having to settle for a field goal opportunity. Brian Jordan comes on for a field goal try here, misses it wide to the right. So a solid drive, uh, doesn't end up in any points. And that was a bit of a problem in the Troy game as well, where you guys just couldn't finish off a couple of drives. Yeah, very frustrating. We gotta, we've got one, put the ball in the end zone there, but two, we gotta be able to make those makeable field goals. That's a, you know, 30 something yard field goal. Uh, we struggled in the kicking game, uh, you know, all night. And it's something we've got to get fixed if, uh, if we want to continue to try to win some games and close games, because we're going to be in some close games. Herrick may be able to make a nice great play by here oh, by them. Yeah, able to get out of the pocket there. and. Avoid a sack from Solomon Brown. They take it into your end of the field, but your defense forces some pressure again, and Anthony Ellis gets the sack. Yeah, big play by Bobby there, making the quarterback step up, and then Anthony finishes him off, and ball's on the ground. We uh, didn't recover it, but they turn it right back over to us. The punter uh, saw some pressure coming, got a little nervous, dropped the ball, and, and we get great field position right there. Mike Holloway gives you a spark here. First two snaps of his season a 25 yard run here and then a 10 yard touchdown he's a dynamic player on the outside he is it was good to have him back uh, i think we missed him you know in the first couple of games there he missed his versatility but it was great to get him out there and and uh, see the things that he can do out of the backfield running blocking all the things that he does and he's gonna have a good year for us guy averaging almost nine yards of carry in his first two yards at csu and takes it into the end zone there, gives you a 6 nothing lead, and then a little trickery here on the extra point try, almost got you two points. Yeah, we, we thought we had a chance, and we get a, our, our long snapper, doesn't do a good job with the throw, puts it a little behind him, you know, and it looks like we got in, but we end up a little bit short, which was a good call by the, by the referee there, but we wanted to try to, we thought we had a chance to do that early. That's why we called it. Defense gets their offense, the football right back as uh, Cruz makes the interception there. Corbin Jackson probably should have had it, but Zane ends up with it, and 
first snap, Kyle hits Nathan Pereira for a touchdown. You're really first minute of the second quarter becomes a different type of game. Yeah, good turnover for our guys. They played a little volleyball with it, finally uh, called it. You know, Zane did a good job with the interception, and then Kyle comes in and throws us a little pass to Prayer. We get pretty solid protection, and he throws a nice ball there in the end, back in the end zone. And, uh, you know, two plays, you're, you're up 13 points when it was a struggle in the first quarter. Career high in passing for Kyle Copeland. Nathan Prayer had a big first half, big second quarter, and now Alan Barnwell, another threat in the running game. He gets you going with a couple of big runs. Yeah, Alan, we, you know, we're trying to get Alan going. He's still been a little banged up from his injury from uh, fall camp. We're trying to get him where he's comfortable with what we're doing. And when he, when he can go, you can see his speed and, and does a good job. So it was good to see him get out in the open and make some things happen. I mean, you can have him and Holloway in there at the same time. It's two guys with really good speed for this level. Yes, and uh, they both do you know well out of the backfield, catch the ball well. So they're they're uh, we're working toward having both of them out there. Here we get backed up on a second and long and or third and long, I think. And Larry makes a great catch over the middle. Kyle stands in there and throws a nice pass and allows us to get to first and go. Nice job by Kyle there to step up in the pocket. Jones makes the catch in traffic and then a, another touchdown run to finish off this drive. It's Mike Holloway up the middle and all of a sudden a 20 to nothing game. Nice movement by the offensive line, a good surge, good to get the touchdown. When then we do a little uh, <clears throat> sky kick here, they don't adjust to it, the ball bounces to us. Should have had it right there, DJ Curl, but we throw it around, it's a hot potato for a little while. Uh, and fortunately, I think Ray Rowe comes out with it, um, which is good for him getting in there. He's hard to see, so that's probably why he got it. Uh, and then we come back and, and Kyle throws a nice little, basically a screen pass out here. Nathan Prayer doing a great job of running and running over people gets us inside the, the four yard line. Prayer really looked good after the catch on some of the balls in that game. Ran really well, ran hard, and uh, he's really got confidence back in that knee. He's playing back to a high level. Keelan Frey's true freshman takes it into the end zone for the third time of the unseason, and Prayer with his best catch of the first half here. Yeah, he makes uh, just some amazing catches where his body's up in the air. It's pretty impressive. It's a nice throw by Kyle to put it where only we could get it. Kyle did a really nice job directing the offense here in the second quarter. 225 yards of offense, 34 points on the board. Another guy with some speed here, Jared Scotland, almost gets into the end zone as well. Yeah, he gets run down by a D lineman there, which we were all disappointed in. You know, you need to, you got to score on that one. But uh, it took us, it took us three downs to get in, but uh, Darius was able to take it in there right before halftime, and uh, it's good to be up. I think that was made it 34 to nothing. It's good to be up going into the half like that and have a really explosive second quarter. Really spread the wealth in the running game. You throw in a guy like Scotland on the end around. Nice to have that many options. Yeah, we're trying. We feel like we've got some weapons. Uh, you know, on offense, as you're uh, the way we you know try to do our offense, you're continuing to see guys and what they're best at, and try to put them in positions to make that happen. And and uh, we're doing that. It's taking us a little while, but guys are gaining one experience, but they're just gaining more confidence in themselves, and I think that's showing. So a 34-0 Charleston Southern lead at the half, courtesy of a huge second quarter. We'll take a look at the second half after this. You're watching The Jamie Chadwell Show, brought to you by Hendrick Toyota. Welcome back to The Jamie Chadwell Show as we take a look back at Charleston Southern's 47-7 win over ETSU, moving into some second half highlights. And obviously, you take control with that huge second quarter, and you get a chance to build that lead here at the start of the third. Yeah, I was a little disappointed on um, this first drive. We had a chance to, you know, take the ball down and, and make some things happen out of halftime because we talked about it, just making some plays. And uh, we get a good drive going on the on the second drive of the quarter there. And, and um, but I really wanted it off the first. You know, you want to come out smoking. We came out and made some mistakes. But you see Kyle throw a nice pass here to Kenny Dinkins. Kenny, this was Kenny's first game back, and he made a couple of nice plays for us. Uh, and we're able to uh, get the ball down here inside the, you know, in the red zone and, and punch it through. I think Alan Barnwell with his first touchdown. Jared Scotland with the big run at the end of the first half. Kenny Dinkins, the catch there to set up the Barnwell touchdown. Two receivers that helped you out last year when you were shorthanded. They did, and so they, you know, they've earned some playing time, and we're trying to find that right mix of rotation for those guys. And um, it was good to have a game like this so you can see where really what where you can put them in and plug them in. Barnwell makes it 40 to nothing, so that was six out of seven drives, I guess, with touchdowns. Had, had to feel good to finish some drives after struggling to do that against Troy and in the first quarter. It was. You know, we, that's something we've, we've worked hard on trying to improve again this week. It's going to be important. Uh, and so, but our defense comes out, and, and Troy McGowan's back out there for us. Had, had a really nice game, had a couple sacks, and uh, they were driving the ball, but we were able to get them behind the sticks here. Two sacks for McGowan's, as you said. You see one of them there. And, 
ETSU was able to make some plays on the ground here in the second half, but kind of just a, a back and forth uh, defensive struggle for the most part in the third quarter. It was, uh, our, they w had a chance to go for it and we stop them on fourth down. So we get great field position here and I uh, want to drive and, and really try to just uh, finish, the, finish the drive with a, a nice play and you know, get, get some touchdowns. And uh, fortunately for us, we're able to get down there but have to settle for a field goal, a short field goal. Keelan Frays gets to the outside, gets a, another nice run here off the pitch and kind of looks like a Ben Robinson clone at times. Yeah, he is. They're about the same size. I think Ben actually might have him beat on height, which is a shock. But uh, we, have, uh, we have a chance to uh, you know, use him. He's, he's obviously had a big start to his career uh, in touchdown wise. And then we, you know, we settle for a chip shot field goal. We hook one wide right, the other one wide left here. So we'll be ready for the PGA Championship next year in the golf because we're spraying it everywhere. But uh, we got we to gotta fix that. So it's you know, disappointing the way we ended that drive. I think it's a few years before it comes back to Kiowa, though. Well, good. That That'll give us some time to practice. ETSU is able to put a drive together here and, and get some points on the scoreboard. An extended drive, obviously some, some younger guys in on defense, but they were able to avoid the shutout here on this series. Yeah, you know, it was disappointing. You did put some young guys in there, but you still want those guys to make some plays and, and not give up a drive. But to uh, you know, ETSU's credit, I thought they, they, they ran some good plays. They ran hard. They, they kept playing. I think that's the one thing that uh, complimented them on. They, no matter what the score was, they were they were playing hard and they wanted to, uh, you know, score and do some things. And for their credit, they did a good job on that. 14 play, 80 yard drive. The finish there with uh, Tony Drew, the one yard touchdown. They're able to move the ball near end again, but your defense comes up with a play to score a touchdown for the second time this season. Yeah, they got another nice drive going, and, and their quarterback made some plays in the scramble. Uh, we had we had chances to get them off the field on third down a couple times, but to their credit, made some plays and. Um, these are some things that we need to obviously continue to try to correct uh, <clears throat> defensively to try to get off on third down. Even if your young guys are out there, you don't want it, you don't want it to be a drop off. You don't want to give them an excuse. Lorenzo Mathis, a big play last year, obviously against Vanderbilt, gets a deflection off the pass here and 87 yard touchdown and nice way to finish off a, a nice win. Yeah, it was good. It was good to see him make some plays for us. Uh, he has a knack when he when he does get his hand on the ball to you know, make, some, make a touchdown and that was a great pick and really a nice run to finish this game off for us. 47-7 bucks to finally shake hands there at midfield and uh, was it weird actually experiencing it going up against your alma mater? You know what, it wasn't, it wasn't weird. It was, um, it was just, it was really uh, great. It was a great feeling just to know they're back and, the, and that they're in good hands with the coaching staff they have and their president and his vision for football. Uh, you know that uh, going forward they're going to do everything they can to, to make their program what it can be. And uh, so it was more just being thankful that to have the opportunity to be there and witness what they're trying to do. Now I'm glad we you know, got the win. And, uh, but it was, it was great to see some old friends and, and uh, knowing that they're in charge of that, that ship there and they've got the right reasons for doing it. CSU gets the two and one on the season. Bucks will try to beat the Citadel for a third straight year on Saturday. Darius Hammond, a big reason they got the win last year. And we let you get to know him better after this on the Jamie Chadwell Show. Darius Hammond had one goal in mind entering 2013 fall camp as a freshman walk-on. Get on the field any way I could. So special team was my route. So I kind of, you know, took advantage of it. Showed what I can do. Showed what he can do would be an accurate assessment. 12 tackles on coverage units made Hammond Charleston Southern Special Teams Player of the Year and earned him a scholarship. Hammond earned notoriety as a sophomore, ranking fifth in the nation in punt return average. The player who says, I'm probably a lot slower than they expect, posted 10 returns of 28 yards or more. Hammond may not have special speed, but he does have. The ability to make people miss. Uh, he just has, you know, he can stick the foot, throw the defenders by, and just get vertical right now. The, the first guy to him hardly ever tackles him. And, you know, he just subtle cuts, the strength and the power to throw people by, push people off of him, just makes him different. Hammond was the difference maker in CSU's win over the Siddle last September. A 74-yard third quarter punt return touchdown was the impetus in the Bucks' second straight victory over their intra-city rival. I noticed a guy in front of me, he was about five yards, so I figured if I make him miss and get to the wide side of the field, it's a pretty good chance it could be a good return. A good football player is what Hammond was at Johnston, South Carolina's Strom Thurmond High School. So good, he was a top five finalist for Mr. Football Honors. 
Hammond arrived at CSU as a late qualifier, but arrived on the coaching staff's radar early in fall camp. Yeah, we realized it pretty much that first, uh, his first fall camp, um, midway through a scrimmage, the first scrimmage we had, we had put him in to give Reyes a breath and gave him just a basic handoff, a basic dive play. And he had made two or three people miss in the hole and he took it 60 yards. And that's when we realized that he was gonna be pretty special uh, behind Reyes. Front and center in the Bucks' run game this year, Hammond has again made the most of his opportunity. 114 yards against North Greenville and 161 yards versus Troy made Hammond the nation's second leading rusher through two weeks. A quiet back, Hammond enjoyed learning from another unassuming ball carrier. Christian, he was a he was a workhorse. He never got tired, you know. That kind of made me uh, have to prove myself that, you know, I could feel his shoes. You know, he was a great running back, and I looked up to him. Hammond's play on the field has made people take notice, and for his coaches and teammates, believe it or not, so is his personality off it. A new summer hairdo has also given Hammond a new nickname. I call him Cisco. I don't know if y'all remember Cisco back in the day, uh, the R&B singer with the different color hair. So it was a f huge personality. It's two different people almost. Like I said, when we when he first got here, he didn't say a word. I mean, you ask him a question, and you have to tell you, Darius, speak up. I can't hear you. And now it's Darius, shut up. You're talking too much. Or Darius, close your mouth. But he just that's who he is now. He's the one that does the most talking in the room. He's the, he's the funny one, but he also knows when to be serious and when not to be serious. So. Hammond takes his new moniker in good fun and is comfortable among a team that has a good deal of fun on and off the field. Well, just getting to know everybody, you know, getting a feel for everybody that, that's around me. You know, like, I'm not really a talkative person if I don't know the people that I'm around. Like, it's pretty fun. Back on the Jamie Chadwell Show, Darius Hammond, junior running back, kick returner, punt returner. He kind of does it all for your team, Jamie. He does. He's, uh, he's, uh, we've talked about it all the time, decided he's a great football player, but uh, he's really tried to develop into becoming an all-around you know, good player because we ask him to block and do some things. But he's dynamic with the ball in his hands. And uh, we said it before the season, I think a lot of people are going to be surprised about him. And he's worked hard to put himself in this position. Former walk-on, I mean, we – my first year here in 2013, uh, one of our coaches said, hey, we need to take this kid as a, I think he's pretty, he's like, he's all, he was player of the year in, in the lower classification and nobody offered him and he showed up and um, that point forward, we like, hey, we got a steal here. So sometimes you're just better to be lucky than, you know, good. And he's, he's really taken uh, the opportunities he's had, he's taken advantage of. Cisco or Peroxide, which nickname you like better? We call him Q-Tip, that's what we call him, but uh, I would go with Peroxide. There's three nicknames. I three nicknames. Yeah. 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 Did you coin that? Uh, yeah, maybe somebody. I think Coach Isaac did. Coach Isaac's got a sick, sick of humor sometimes. So, speaking to Coach Isaac, you know, the coach Ch asked Coach Chabwell the first week. I mean, that got a lot of know, views. Your I still it. blowing up. On it was. That. I think there was five views for it. So that was that was <laughs> impressive. That doubled uh, last year's total. It might have gone to six. I think my dad watched it again, nice. but we upped it up by one. But Good. this week we hear from Newland Isaac. All right, uh, Coach Chadwell, I am new and Isaac from Hopkins, South Carolina. And the one question that I want to ask is, why are you so sarcastic? Um, where does it come from? Is it a family thing? Is it a background thing? Is it a Tennessee thing? I just want to know, where does the sarcasm come from? So, in case you could understand, between all the all rights he said, he asked, why am I sarcastic? <clears throat> Two reasons. One, when you're around players uh, that you pl uh, coach, namely Coach Isaac, that are from certain places, uh, Lower Richland, uh, they only understand one way to talk to them. So that's why I'm sarcastic to Coach Isaac. Two, in my family, growing up, and it has nothing to do with being from Tennessee, even though I'm proud of being from Tennessee, pretty proud. Um, my family's got a little sarcasm to them, especially my mother. Uh, and so if, uh, if you're not quick-witted or come back, they're going to eat you up. And so you had to learn growing up real quick to uh, have a comeback ready to go where they're just going to keep pounding you and pounding you. So that's where it came from. So you're saying that Newland doesn't have a quick wit? Uh, Newland doesn't have very quick wit at all. Uh, and uh, But ladies, that's basically the only value he brings. So um, we're working with him. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing he's got good running backs. He does have a good running back. He does a great job coaching them. Uh, I think most of the time he just says, hey, guys, I don't know what I'm doing, but if y'all can just figure this out, it'd be great. Try to make me look good. But, no, coach does a great job coaching the backs. He's had, you know, an off-conference running back. 
uh, ever since that he's been coaching running backs and uh, he does a great job for us. And I think you've seen that with our young, our young players, especially uh, Keelan, how quickly he's you know taken over. So thanks for the question, Coach Isaac. Running game obviously been big on both sides in the Citadel game, triple option for them, and you guys obviously want to run the football. Should be another good one. It should be. I think it'll be a, a you know a four quarter battle, come down to kicking and some turnovers. That's what the last two games have came down to. In a games like these, your position, uh, possessions are limited. You know you don't have as many as you do in a normally a normal game because of the time of possession, and so you got to make the most of those drives. And um, and if we can do that and. Uh, you know, try to slow them down offensively because you're not going to shut them down because of what they do. But if you can slow them down uh, and uh, score some points when you need to, you got a good chance to win. But it, it's going to be a tough one. Uh, I think this, you know, probably the best team that uh, uh, you know they've had down there since we've been here, and uh, it'll be a big challenge for us. Saturday, six o'clock kickoff. Make sure to make the trip to Johnson Haygood Stadium. If not, you can watch it on ESPN three. For Jamie Chadwell, my name is Kevin O'Rourke. Thanks for watching the Jamie Chadwell Show brought to you by Hendrick Toyota.